Hello, buddy. Today we're going to be checking out and installing and browsing the internet on Redstone OS. That is the North Korean operating system that is essentially KDE Rice to look like Mac OS. And I actually think they've done a really good job of the theming here. Okay. Uh, now we can use DHCV. Uh, now, of course, by default, this is actually designed, of course, designed for the Korean intranet, but you can use it elsewhere. Although, interesting, it's only got a few time zones by default. Osaka, Japan, Pyongyang, Tokyo, Japan, and Yakutsk, Russia. Now, I can understand excluding uh, South Korea, but why no uh, China? That, that's an interesting question. Okay, and now we can get right into our operating system. Didn't take that long to install. Okay, that's the bootloader for Redstone. It's got a Patreonic logo. And I also heard it's got some low-level security and censorship features. I, I don't think that's going to have a big impact, but let's see. There are also some people who think it's uh, it phones home. I, I would doubt it purely because any such functionality is probably going to be designed for the Korean intranet, not the public internet. Okay, so the Firefox is completely in Korean. And one thing you can notice is this is using a 10 space IP address, which is a local intranet IP address. And I guess their whole intranet runs on this. But now let's try an, a website that's on the internet. Now we have DNS and we should be able to reach the internet. If we can't, we can look at the settings. Okay, so it seems like our DNS settings actually got overridden somehow. Despite what it hit and our local domain. Now that we should have working DNS. Try dragging. It's weird Firefox. It's, I believe it's rice to look like Safari, and it kind of looks like Safari. So we had to go through a few folders to find our admin, and now we've got app. So can we use sudo? We can, okay. So if we have sudo, then we can do anything that root can. Let's see what, uh, so looks like we do actually have an IP address. Now running a command called root setting, we can enable the root user. And here we can enter a password for the root user and then we can click this to enable it. Now we should be able to operate as root. Now with that, we can change the UI to English. There's a command for that. Okay, now I've changed the language. Uh, we can reboot the system for that to take effect. Now I'm signed in as the root user. Now I don't really understand the whole point of having that root setter command. And now let's see if uh, ne nara, okay, ne nara never goes into English mode. But that's okay. Now this page is never going to work because it's not an internet URL. But let's see if we can get Google working. So here's the magic. How, how does it stop us from using the internet? Well, it's got a bunch of uh, IP tables rules because Despite having DNS settings, uh, you're not allowed to use them. So we've got the application filter, uh, but it's actually, it blocks DNS and it blocks a lot of things, wow. So we can simply, we can remove this file. It's gonna be service restore IP tables, I think, because this is service, I always get this mixed up because on system D it's the opposite of what it was on the old. Okay. And now Google works. Now I also thought it'd be interesting to see, can we update this system using the package manager? Now this appears to be some sort of red hat base, but the answer seems to be no because they've completely nuked the thing that would allow you to do that. But we can use this browser. Okay, now we have to do it in here because, of course, that's going to a North Korean search engine that wouldn't work. 
And here's a bunch of commentary about Red Star OS. Let's see if we can actually watch a YouTube video on it. Hmm. Uh, I can't read Korean, but I can try and translate this in editing. Oh, it's it's a certificate error. That makes sense, actually, because... Oh, no, it's just going back to the intranet. Because, of course, there's not going to be any special uh, certificates installed on this version. Let's try some other sites. Does Bing work? Not really. Wikipedia? Certificate error. It's kind of unfortunate how the modern internet is so reliant on SSL that actually doing anything on older operating systems or operating systems of questionable origins is a lot trickier. Because even though the HTTP protocol is backwards and forwards compatible all the way to version 1, certificates uh, require a modern OS and a certificate store. Now, it also comes with a Office suite, which once again does not have an English translation, and this is basically... This pretty much looks like Excel on Mac. Uh, we can try out some formulas. This is probably some sort of fork of Libra Office or Open Office. Okay, yeah, no, we have to start with the higher base if we want to use exponential. And, uh, yeah, it works. Oh. Oh, that's weird. I, I don't know what version that would have changed, but that's actually weird. Because it seems to be hitting a... Yeah, okay. Okay, no, actually, it's not... I, I, I kind of wrote the formula. I was thinking that's really weird. And it's also, it's got Lucida Grande, which was at the time of this operating system's release. This was the uh, font that macOS would use. And yeah, this is definitely LibreOffice. I remember this graphing editor. And it, it yeah, works just like LibreOffice. This one looks like some kind of security program, but it's actually a pretty decent looking music program, which is not what I was expecting. Of course, have system preferences, utilities, software manager. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to get any more software because... No, we're absolutely not, because, of course, we're not on the Korean intranet, and there is no way uh, short of going to North Korea to get on it. Got a simple text editor, an email client, which I imagine is not going to do anything interesting. Probably would work, but it's not going to... Okay, what does Grab do? It's also a very... Grab is a very popular app in Southeast Asia. It's like the Asian equivalent of Uber, but I don't think this has any correlation to that. This is some sort of help file viewer, I would guess, but I don't know if we've got any CHM files. And now we've got the ability to put in a DVD. We can auto-run it. Note, executing a file on a medium may compromise your system security. There we go. And this is a logo for the Redstone installer, which is actually called Ubuntu Custom ISO Preseed. We've also got an EXE file. Now, I think this comes with Wine, so we might actually be able to run this if we go down to the terminal or the console, because, of course, this is still a KDE base, despite looking like a Mac. Really, though, it, wor it works. Like, I actually think the UI design here... Okay, it doesn't have Wine. I actually think the UI design here is good. Obviously, they put a lot of work into this. Okay. Got some Python files. Now, let's see if we can... Of course, we can open these. Simple text. Wow, they made the whole GTK GUI in Python, which is... I guess people do that. But that's, that's pretty cool. And it's technically then, even though it's got like a red hat... How, how does it... Have an okay, okay, it's not. I thought for a second, how does it have an ISO of itself? LPMs, see what these are all the programs that come with Redstone. Now, unfortunately, binary compatibility is not that good on Linux, so you're unlikely to be able to just take these and run these on a modern Linux system. But with some tweaking, some of these might work. Oh, we got some GNOME utilities, we've also got SE Linux which usually would come with something like Fedora or Red Hat. And I don't know if that's doing anything particularly special here. But it's quite a common package. It's secure Linux. 
got system config. And here is where our theme lives. Wonder if we could, is there a way of changing those? Because I know the previous versions of Redstone did have more of a Windows XP look, but no, it doesn't. Oh, we even have the graphite theme from macOS. Uh, the widely believed backstory on the theme of this is that Kim Jong-un himself uh, bought a Mac around 2011, and he he liked it, so he decided that he would have uh, a version that looked very similar for his people. So that's sort of how this design came about. That seems to work. I think that's going to be all for this video. Hope it was interesting. Hope you enjoyed uh, seeing a bit of North Korean Redstone OS on the internet, even though, unfortunately, because of SSL, a lot of sites don't really support it. I think the reason Google works so much is because it's still got a HTTP version.